So there are four ways that CrowdFunder is different. The first is it's free. That's right. We don't charge you. We have a couple of different models of pricing models that you can choose from. One of them is 100% free to you. You do still have to pay payment processing, um, but we don't charge you anything. The way we make money is we ask your supporters for tips. And if they tip us, then we get paid. And if they don't, then we don't. But we've been doing this for 12 years at Connection Point, even though CrowdFunder is only six months old. Connection Point has been around for over 12 years. We know the dynamics there. We know that we're able to get paid. So that's one model that's completely free. The next model, nearly free, we ask your supporters to cover your costs. And generally they do. And what that does is it brings the cost of crowdfunding at minimum below 2% and uh, oftentimes even below 1%. And so if you compare that to the cost of crowdfunding with other platforms where it's between 9 and 10%, it's significantly better for creators. Their total cost of crowdfunding to be around 2% lower, 1% to 2% lower than credit card fees. Very, very cost-effective way to do it. The second thing is that CrowdFunder is flexible. It's really designed to support the way that creators want to connect with their supporters and not in a way that protects us, the platform, right? And so, for example, we allow for both keep it all and all or nothing campaigns. The creator gets to choose. So for example, if you've already produced all of the assets and you're just using this as a way of generating buzz or determining uh, pre-order numbers, then you can run a keep it all campaign and the funds come to you immediately because we don't hold the funds at all. All the funds go directly to the creator themselves. We don't touch them. We don't hold them. Also with us, there are no tiers. So basically you put in the rewards that you want to offer. The supporters can pick whichever ones they want. They don't have to pick just one tier and then possibly some add-ons afterwards, but they're not forced into a certain tier and therefore they have the flexibility to order a variety of different items from you. And we've seen that that actually increases the amount of items that people will select because they're able to make their own choices and not be forced into a specific tier. We also allow creators to run concurrent campaigns. So that means more than one campaign at once. By running more campaigns over the course of a year, you're able to connect more often with your audience and not have to wait for one campaign to be completely fulfilled before you start another. We know that creators are creating all the time. They're constantly coming up with new things that they want to produce. There's no reason for them to have to wait. The only reasons why other platforms do that is again, to protect their own interests. I guess another way that we make it more flexible to support your business is that we allow when your campaign ends to actually roll it over into a store. So all of the promotion that you've done, and like you said, Kurt, you know, it's very hard for creators to self-promote. So if you've already gone through all of that and you've already done all the promotion, you should have that link live on if you want to, to be able to continue using that to fund. Number one was free. Two, it's flexible. Number three is we have something called CrowdFunder Professional, which does not exist in other platforms, but what it does, there's an extra level of features and more advanced functionality for those that are either capable and interested in more features that allow them to set up their own branding. You can replace the CrowdFunder branding, put in your own logo, your own colors, your own navigation menu with whatever uh, links you want in there. It's almost like a takeover with your own brand of your CrowdFunder campaign. It's about connecting you with your supporter not connecting your supporter with the platform. There are advanced roles and permissions in there where if let's say you're a publisher, you can invite different members of your team with different permissions. And then you can also invite the creators that you're working with to work on their campaigns, just their campaigns at the permission level that you want them to be in there so that they can help you, the publisher, promote. Finally, you can get a verified badge. It's a blue tick. It does not cost $8. There are certain additional privileges that come with that that help you do it. All those things with CrowdFunder Professional where we put your brand first leads me into point number four, which is we're trying to help the creators build their audience directly. Similar to the way that with Shopify, if you have a Shopify account and you're paying Shopify to have that account, you can have a direct to consumer store and direct sales relationship with your customers and they become your customers. You can contact them in any way that you want, of course, compliant with family laws, but, and they remain your customers forever. They do not become our customers. They're not crowdfunders customers. They are yours. And that's very different than the other platforms. The other platforms are a little bit more like Amazon, where the customer belongs to the platform. You think about all the people that have Amazon Prime as an example, but the customer belongs to the platform and they are paying the platform. And then the platform pays their suppliers. Amazon pays their suppliers. So with other crowdfunding platforms, the creator is essentially a supplier to that platform because the customer is not paying them directly. The customer is paying the platform. The platform is paying them. The platform owns that customer relationship, which is not the way we do it. We want the creator to own the customer relationship.